Welcome to Skin and Beauty Health with Essential Oils. I don't know about you ladies, but I am so excited for this class and to learn all of the things because my skin needs some love. A little bit about us. We're a group of like-minded women who came together to share our wellness journey. We come from all different backgrounds, um, some healthcare, some teachers, food industry, um, all over the place and we love to share our wellness journey. Now we're doing it via Zoom because COVID, um, but this is what we do. First, let's start off with our disclaimer. The information that we share is not meant to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. We are not doctors. We have gathered research and personal testimonials to create this class in order to share experiences and open one's mind to alternative methods. So on tonight's agenda, the Young Living Difference we're going to go over, some answers to ailments you may have, an amazing DIY mermaid hairspray. I don't know what that's about, but I am so excited for it. Our dirty face protocol and beauty from the inside out. So let's talk some oils. And I think we're going to welcome Angel and Leah, and they're gonna tell us all of the beauty secrets tonight. Awesome. So now that we can see things, which actually is just a bunch of lists of chemicals, so might not be so exciting, but we're basically going to talk a little bit about kind of why natural beauty matters. Um, so this always throws me is that in America, there's only 11 ingredients on the outlaw ingredient list for makeup, whereas in the EU, they prohibited 1300 and Young Living is more than 2500. So we have not changed our laws in America. I think it's since the 30s, if I'm not mistaken. And so everything that was allowed in there is still allowed. And that's not really good because a lot of studies have been done. A lot has been seen that this is not what you want to do for your body. Um, and I think it's something that's over 100 chemicals are put on a woman's body in the first like hour of her waking up, typically. Like if you put on makeup, moisturizer, brush your teeth, shower, like it's kind of endless. Um, so that's just like a tidbit of that. We could literally have an entire class on all of that. So short version. Um, so then I listed just, it's kind of two slides really, or it might be three. No, two slides, two slides of um, all the things that can show up in um, beauty products, which I just can't get over. Cause again, I didn't realize it for a long time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm doing good enough. Or like click on bare minerals. Cause I was like, oh, it's fine. It's like better but not, not what you need to be doing. So, um, so the first one, so I'll kind of read a little bit fast and share through. And if you are interested in like the chemicals and what's going on, cause like I love organic chemistry for whatever reason. And this is like right in there and I'm like, Oh, I could draw them, but I get excited. So if you're excited or you just want to know what the hell's in possible beauty products you might still be using, or just want to know what's going on, you can take a screenshot and that'll, um, you know, let you look back because if we keep, if I read every one of these, we'd be here a very long time and we're conscious of everyone's time. So formaldehyde, that's actually something used to preserve dead bodies when they have passed away and they're getting ready to be set to go for a funeral. Um, and it's also a known carcinogen. So associated with certain types of cancers, you have triclosan, that's in a lot of beauty products and um, body washes. So that can mess with your thyroid hormones, which a lot of us probably know that regulates your metabolism and actually helps you grow and develop. It can impact weight loss, weight gain. I mean, that's endless too. Whole class on that we could do. Um, paraformaldehyde, so a type of formaldehyde. Methylene glycol, quantum 1,5, I think, instead of 15, releases of formaldehyde. 1,4-dioxine, mercury, don't do that because um, that's not good for kidneys and nervous system. Again, short versions on all these. Um, dibutyl and dialexyl phthalates, which disrupt hormones and damage the reproductive system, isobutyl and isopropyl parabens, which disrupt hormones and harm the reproductive system, and then um, the hemineophenolamine, which I can't say that word, which is in hair dyes, uh, and that can irritate the skin and actually damage your DNA, and then possibly to cancer. So a lot of times it's not if you have one dose of this, like, oh, cancer, you're done. It, that's not how that works. But if you I don't know, dye your hair every other week or you dye it often, like that can cause the issue. So it's kind of about bioaccumulation of a lot of this stuff. So it's not that you have a one time and you're done. It's if you've 
I don't know, put on makeup that contains formaldehyde every day for 25 years, like that can cause bioaccumulation. And you can detox from that. And Angel's going to talk a little bit about that too. So that's kind of short version on these particular chemicals. Okay. And then Sarah, the next slide goes into um, some more. So again, I'll be real quick. Um, so BHA, BHT, cold tart eyes, DA, regulating green, dibutyl phthalate, endocrine disruptor. That's a big one. So our endocrine system is related to our thyroid our metabolism, how our body works with hormones. Again, an entire class can be done on that, one that I kind of talk on to. Um, so that's like, we don't want that. We have enough like with stress that can cause those kinds of things. So adding chemical to it, not so nice. Parabens, cancer. Again, lots of studies are done on that. You can particularize which cancer for how long, but short version. Um, parfum, which is fragrance. Now, this is a big one because I used to use like Lush. I'm going to just pick on brands, not in a mean way. I used to love them all. But um, Lush has fragrance. And I went to the store and asked them like, what, what is this? What is, what is in your fragrance? And they wouldn't or couldn't tell me because either they didn't know. And she said that it could be because they used a certain recipe of different stuff that people were ripping off and like making their own. I'm like, mm hmm. So now I can't even walk in that store because the artificial fragrances are so strong. So, and that's one that a fragrance can contain 14 chemicals that they're not required to release of what they are and are linked to hormone disruption, allergic reactions. And this literally says 80% have not been even tested on human safety because we don't have to in this country. Um, petroleum. I used to use petroleum jelly all the time. Cannot believe I did that. Um, Cause you, that's, used to make gasoline, jet fuel, plastic polymers. It's like all this stuff that basically if you want to blow up, <laughs> um, well, I don't want to blow up. Uh, Siloxanes, endocrine disruptor, phthalates, linked to early puberty in girls, reduced sperm count in men, obesity and insulin resistant in men, kidney and liver failure in young children. Again, these are large quantities. So your kids have phthalates on them. They're not going to all of a sudden have all these issues. It's just the long-term exposure. And so that's kind of what hit me was like, oh, I've been putting on makeup from like Claire's and CVS for 20 some odd years. I'm like, shit, must change. So I did it slow and I did it like one thing at a time. So don't get overwhelmed. I just wanted to make sure I outlined quickly lots of chemicals. And then Sarah, the next slide kind of talks about um, what Young Living doesn't have. Um, so no nanoparticles, which are super tiny particles that can be inhaled, penetrate the skin, penetrate cell membranes to cause an increase in free radicals that damage your DNA. Um, and those are some that are found in a lot of cosmetics, not in Young Living's. Parabens we kind of talked to, about, but it's a preservative used heavily in the cosmetic industry. Um, and so I love this because Young Living uses a natural preservative like natural benzyl alcohol. And if you want to know like more about what the hell that is, there is... Um, Dr. Lindsay Elmore does amazing um, videos on that. And she goes into a lot of depth. And I love watching her stuff because we're dope. But um, short version. So, and then the phthalates, which we just talked about. And they're found in car parts, cosmetics. Which the fact that something's found in a car part and also cosmetics to me is like, what the hell? But whatever, it's no big deal. And especially in beauty products like nail polish, lipstick, and perfumes. And no heavy metals. We don't want heavy metals. And that includes things like mercury that I mentioned on the other slide. So that's kind of, believe it or not, the short version of um, some of the more dangerous products that can end up in our beauty care in this country. Um, and again, short version. And we're going to go and talk about so many things. But first, ingrown hairs. Because I get asked a lot of questions about, um, well, a lot of things. But in particular, we're going to talk about um, some that, Angel and I get asked a lot of. That's why we were like, let's do this thing and this thing. So ingrown hairs. Those can happen. I'm sure we probably know this, but I'm going to pretend you don't. Um, you know, if you're shaving and you like get the wrong way, it can be under your armpit, which is super painful. It can be other places too that you shave, you know, you get the idea. And they can be like, not that fun. There's a lot of different ways that work for different people, of course, as usual, because it's every person's body is different. But the most common essential oils that help um, is like tea tree oil. So it gets in there and helps it kind of break down so that you don't have this painful ingrown hair, as well as lavender, lemongrass, and the blend purification that Young Living has that has citronella, rosemary, lemongrass, tea tree, lavender, and myrtle in there. And so what I have done in the past, if I have like a nasty one, I'll make a little like 
jar with coconut oil, all those oils. Sometimes I'll add in like a sugar for a scrub factor so that you can kind of exfoliate the skin as well. And that usually helps with the ingrown hair really nicely. If you're like, I don't have time for that, throw those oils on. Careful where you're throwing them. If you have more questions about that, we can talk. Um, but just, you know, like in case you have an ingrown hair next to your eye or in your lady areas, don't do that. We'll talk about that. But those are the general ones for an ingrown hair. So then we have Angel is going to talk about our next little ailment or struggle that a lot of us might have. Hi, everyone. That's so great for the ingrown hairs because you're right, sometimes I get them in places that are not fun and I just want to get rid of them as soon as possible. So I would like to start by saying that we are going to be talking about ailments, but I feel like a lot of these issues seem to be more common, um, but that does not mean they should be normal. And we're here to stay above the wellness line, not below it. When you stay above the wellness line, your beauty naturally shines through. And that's kind of going to be the gist of everything we're talking about. Yeah, we're targeting ailments, but these things can still be applied to you every day. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there just so everyone kind of understood. We want to get to the point where we don't have to worry about these things, right? Um, so there's no one size fits all for anything ever. But what we can tell you is that you can still achieve a gorgeous glow, great skin, and all that stuff no matter what, no matter what your ailments are or what your conditions are. Just keep it consistent we love to highlight our oily beauty world, which can be applied in any way. DIY, current products that Young Living has, which we can tell you how to get those with our ditch and switch technique. Um, we love doing that. So me and Leah will definitely mention some of the Young Living products in with a bunch of the oils as well. Because sometimes you don't always have time to DIY and you just want a quicker, more convenient, product, right? That still has essential oils and all the great goodness in there. I can't wait to share some of these tender loving care items with you. I just want to say that with these products that we are going to be talking about, we love buying them from Young Living because we get rewarded for our healthy choices, which we're going to go over at the end. Um, and we're going to show you how you can get rewarded for buying these products as well. Quick little tip, just like a fun little side note. For any kind of thing, DIY or anything that you want to do, you can just add 10 to 15 drops of essential oil to any two ounces of your face lotion or any other like if you already have, I would say like a scrub or something and you don't want to just toss it and get something new, 10 to 15 drops of your oil that you think really vibes with you and is what your skin is calling, just put that in. That's a great place to start. You don't need to get crazy because this stuff, like Leo was saying, it's a lot. But you start simple, start small, start where you're at. And warning, <laughs> the side effects of Young Living Beauty products may include more confidence, covetable hair, and dreamy skin because it's real. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to jump in with the nails, like Leo was saying. Um, nails that break all the time, they're no fun. Nail polish, I feel like it's so hard to find non-toxic options. I know there are some out there, but it's still pretty scary. Um, and it's not convenient. I don't feel like there's too many options when you go to the nail salons and stuff. So I want to focus on how to keep your nails at peak, even if you are going into local salon. There's no need to have a petty panic. You can remove the polish without all those harsh chemicals and treat your nails after so they could spring back to life. I feel like so many times when I've gotten my nails done after they've just been so brittle, sometimes they have a white line in them. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but yeah, that I do not like that. So we have a nail strengthening cuticle oil treatment. And in there we have lavender, rosemary, lemon, frankincense, and our V6 oil. So I'll just kind of show you guys really quickly the V6 oil. I love this oil. And I will go into a little bit more, but let me talk about those essential oils in there. It'll give them the support they need to grow back quickly and firmly. So lavenders, very calming, very soothing. Rosemary, it's an expectorant. So it really helps accentuate and really get things moving. Same with um, lemon, it's a brightener. So it really helps kind of bring those cuticles out and polish them. Frankincense, well, that's just good for everything. You'll probably hear me say frankincense for all of the things. Yes, 
Um, but I also wanted to pinpoint a little bit of our V6 oil as well, because this has amazing nourishing skin oils in here already. So it can be applied to any of the options we're talking about. And a lot of our oils can be used straight on the skin as well, because we have such great quality uh, essential oils that they can go on your skin undiluted. We call it neat. Unless it's a hot oil, then that might irritate, but you just use that with a carrier oil like the V6. So in the V6, there's fractionated coconut oil, which is super hydrating. There's sesame seed oil, which is great for circulation, and it's a very warming carrier oil. Grapeseed oil is great for oily skin types, so some of the facial things that we're going to be talking about. Sweet almond oil, it's got a more nutty aroma, um, but it's overall, it's great for all skin types. There's also wheat germ oil in there, sunflower oil, and olive oil, which we all know olive oil is amazing. Um, the great thing about the V6 as well is that it doesn't have all those smells. I typically use my like cooking oils in a lot of these recipes and DIYs, and they smell like the oil. This one is fractionated oils, so it doesn't smell, and it lets your essential oils really shine through. That's really what I love about this one, too. With that little recipe cuticle treatment I told you about, you just rub that on your nails, get a little cotton ball, put that there. It's in the V6, so it's really nourishing for all those oils I just mentioned on top of the added benefits of those essential oils. And I also like the V6, because like I said, those are all oils that I would eat. So whatever I put in my body can go on my body. That's a general rule of thumb that I think with beauty products, it's fun. Like when we talk about these DIYs and everything, you can eat, you could use the stuff in your own kitchen, which is <laughs> amazing. All right, now we're gonna talk about a nail polish remover, right? Because you can do that too. What if you're like, you know, they chip or something. I feel like I, my nails are always chipping when I get them done. We can combine citrus fresh and lemon essential oils to break down the polish while keeping your nails and cuticles nourished. It's also got the added bonus of a bright sunny scent. Have you guys ever used nail polish remover and it's like almost doesn't smell healthy? It smells like you're, I don't know, I guess in a, in a salon full of toxins. <laughs> yeah, so if you do those, I would say equal parts. So six drops of each, citrus fresh, and then six drops of lemon to two thirds cup of apple cider vinegar or isopropyl alcohol, that can be your little um, remover. Now, it is gonna take you a little bit more elbow grease, but that's okay because it doesn't contain acetone. Some of those things that Leo was mentioning, which are found in most commercial polish removers, acetone is flammable. It's a chemical strong enough to dissolve plastics as well as formaldehyde, tooling and filing. So yes, they're quick to clear off the polish, but when it comes to strong, healthy nails, slow and citrus scented definitely wins the race for me. Let's get a fist pump for homemade nail polish remover. Boom. <laughs> and I love this because like I'm saying, the aroma is very invigorating and the, the lemon really amps up the citrus fresh. So it's like even more concentrated. And Leah, I don't know if you want to take it away with your wrinkle talk. Oh, yes. Um, so I've been getting a lot of questions about wrinkles as my friends and I age into our 90s. And so I thought, let's talk about wrinkles. Um, there are a lot of her wrinkles. So I'm going to just, I made a little list so I wouldn't forget any of them. And I don't, again, want to take 45 minutes on them. Um, so the first one I'll just talk about really quick is uh, a wrinkle cream that Young Living does have. Um, which is the Baswilla Wrinkle Cream. And so that has frankincense and sandalwood essential oils in there. Um, and again, like Angel said, if you don't have a ton of time to DIY or you're like, I can't handle this, you can buy this wrinkle cream, you'll be set to go. Um, and that is just an easy, an easy thing. Um, and then we're gonna go into the actual oils that um, can be helpful. So lemon, um, which does just so much. Um, Side note, lemon also has like vitamin C, D-limonene, which can help with your immune system, which is extra important. Um, if our immune system is strong, that actually does impact your skin and your wrinkles for just, again, whole other reasons. But it can also reduce oxidative stress on your body. And that just means kind of like calm you down a little. And that, again, impacts your wrinkles, believe it or not. So that um, is one oil so far. Then we have sandalwood. So my favorite one to put when I make a face one is Royal Hawaiian Sandalwood, you can kind of see the little bottle. Um, this one's amazing. Anti-inflammatory properties um, can keep your skin moisturized 
And so when your skin is um, hydrated or moisturized, um, it's kind of plumper. So it can reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Um, Clary Sage, I'm like, oh, no, that's in my bathroom because I put that on every day. And that um, actually help prevent DNA and proteins from being damaged by free radicals. So free radicals are can be a lot of things. They're generally looked at as stress, but also it's like pollution. Or um, if you have, I don't know, like a lot of chemicals going on in your home and actually, you know, like, or toxic laundry soap. I'm pointing at my like laundry room that's outside the back door that we have to put on like four diffusers to stop that smell and the oxidative stress from coming in. So Clary Sage. Um, it also does a lot of also other great things, um, but short version. So lavender. Lavender for the skin is just incredible. It does endless things really uh, in terms of wrinkles. So when I make my aunt's face cream, she uses um, coconut oil, lavender, frankincense, and purification, which we talked about earlier, that blend. They actually found in a study that um, a research team that looked at the antioxidants effect of lavender found that um, lavender oil actually helps prevent against oxidative stress in the brain. So it's not even just your skin on the surface, it's like your brain. So I know for me, my face is sensitive to lavender oil, whereas my aunt can pour it all over herself. So if you're just getting, you know, Young Living Straight Lavender, like it is strong, so you'd want to do like a patch test either on like this soft area of your skin or even on your neck just to make sure you're good with it. Um, but it also can be used, this is off topic, but for burns or if you cut yourself, I cut myself like on my hands the other day with the scissors like all over the place and just lavendered it up, stopped bleeding, done. Um, I did put a paper towel on in case I didn't you know, want to bleed all over the place. Um, so lavender is like extra amazing. Um, carrot seed oil. Another one when I used to make my sunscreen where young women came out with theirs, carrot seed is like beautiful. If you can have some antioxidants going on, your skin can be healthy. And that's part inside, part outside. Antioxidants help prevent aging by stopping the breakdown of healthy cells in the skin. Um, Yang Lang, such an amazing one. I'm just like, could talk all night about that too. Can help um, skin renewal. It's actually been shown to help rebuild the skin's proteins and fats while reducing the number of free radicals. So we hear that word again. Many skin companies actually add Yangling to their products um, to take advantage of the healing properties. And I believe Young Living does the same. I know I have put that in my face stuff as well. I also put it on me every day. That's another one that you can apply neat usually. You know, everyone's different. Disclaimer. But for me, it's like all on me. And it just smells good. It's like known as a happy oil too. So who doesn't want to be happy? which is probably why it helps with oxidative stress too. Rosemary, Angel mentioned rosemary a little bit. So they can prevent wrinkles by stopping free radicals from breaking down the skin's elasticity. So I used to live in the center of New York City where things are batshit insane. And that is where you could find a million free radicals a second. That is not scientific, but that's what I decided. So when I left, my skin actually like improved. I had all these young living tools and getting away from all the pollution, all the craziness onto your face. It's also your body, but you know, frankincense, the magical is ever just, yes. Oh, I have Yangling next to me too. Okay. Here's my little Frank. Frank and I are best friends forever and always. Um, it's actually effective in reducing the appearance of scarring stretch marks as well. Ooh, stretch marks. I forgot about that. And wrinkles and fine lines. So this one I put like heavily in my face cream. And also I have a couple of these lines starting. So I pour this on my face um, because yes, and it can actually help tone the skin and promote new skin cell growth, which is exciting because if you have all these dead skin cells from all the stress, it can help promote new ones to have. Um, rose oil, so magical. Um, but again, short version can help reduce puffiness and redness in the skin. And also keep, um, it's also been looked at for skin renewal. So that same thing with the skin cells. So that's a really beautiful one um, that just, yes, no words for that one either. So these are, again, there could be a whole, probably five hour class on wrinkles, but that is the short version. Um, and I definitely have that on a list. So if it makes sense, I can copy paste it into the chat too. Um, but those are kind of the, the 10 to 11 biggest things that I've been helping people use for wrinkles. Ooh, ooh, and there's one more actually, I lied. So I tend to put our favorite oil, Valor, in there. Valor does endless things as well, but I stick it in um, when I made my mom's um, face thing and put, um, put this in there because I didn't have blue tansy on hand, which Angel's gonna talk about a little bit later too. But this has also frankincense in it and 
blue tansy. So I was like, good, throw that in. Um, so Valor's a really yummy one. Um, so that's kind of my story. So Angel, I believe you are next for a new ailment. So this one's acne, right? So I feel like a lot of what you were saying, Leah, with the antioxidants and all that stuff, you know, that comes from stress, oxidative stress. Um, and where does acne come from? Like, I break out when I am anxious, when I am stressed. So it's all those inner workings that are really going on. The good news is that certain essential oils have cleansing properties, which not only can be used to clean and exfoliate your face, but it can help reduce the appearance of blemishes, further improve the appearance of already healthy skin, make it more even and bright looking. So let's get to banishing those blemishes. Um, let's talk easy ways to get this into your daily routine. One to do two drops in your face wash every morning. Um, one drop to honey, let it sit on your face for 10 minutes. Bam, hop in the shower. You can take V6, a cotton ball, and a drop of essential oil to freshly wash your face, maybe eucalyptus or tea tree for those invigorating, fresh face feeling oils. You could even create your own facial mist. I would say facial toners. So mist is gonna be water. Toner is gonna have a witch hazel or something with a little bit more of a brightening um, liquid in there. So let me just run you through some of the oils that you can apply any of those things to. Frankincense, right? This one, again, it's one in doubt, frank it out. I don't even know, because that rhymes and I like it. <laughs> um, but when it comes to skin and any other thing for oils, like frankincense is my go-to. I like don't get anything smaller than the 15 ml for Frank. And if they had a bigger one, I would get it. <laughs> um, no skincare list would be complete without this earthy, uplifting essential oil. It helps tone and reduce the appearance on, of uneven skin tones. Then we have orange or even like citrus fresh. Citrus fresh is like a big blend of a bunch of brightening oils. Um, it's got, let me think off the top of my head, definitely tangerine, orange, lemon. Um, I think it even has grapefruit and I know it has spearmint because those, I feel like they're brightening and then you get that pop of like that spearmint in there. So those brightening oils target oily skin, especially that T-zone area. It allows your skin to have a more balanced and bright look. The next one you can do is Manuka essential oil. This gives blemishes the boot. It's a gentler, more subtle cousin of tea tree, providing all the same benefits, soothes skin, healthy looking nails, and a cleansed complexion. So you could even add it into the recipe I mentioned earlier. Then tea tree. This one's a multitasker. This oil moisturizes and cleanses. It's a top pick for blemish prone skin. Um, this can also be used as a spot treatment to reduce the appearance of blemishes. Then we have rosemary. It's an energizing herbal scent and it'll leave your face feeling fresh and bright. Blue tansy. This is a rich, beautiful essential oil that's gonna be your new BFF and your skincare sidekick. This oil is all about making you feel your best while cleansing and beautifying your skin. And Leah, I loved your little tip that, you know, if you run out of blue tansy, this little guy, because it's in there, right? So it can work. There's also geranium, which is the go for the glow. This is a potent oil that lets the radiance of your skin just naturally come through. We have carrot seed too. I know it's got a ton of vitamin A. That's another brightening oil for me. I love using that one. Cedarwood, I kind of consider this one in the sense of skin and hair, like the queen of the beauty oils because I just feel like it's done everything for me. Again, it may not be everything for you, but I, that's how I feel. I feel like it's my go-to. Then we also have bergamot as well. This one's more of a citrusy one. So with some citrus ones, you do have to be careful if you're gonna be out in the sun a lot, just you know, be aware of that because these are brightening, they brighten up your skin, and then you have the sun coming at you, right? So it's like intensifying and maybe it could lead to more sunburn. So then you grab lavender or sunscreen. Then we have lavender or ger German chamomile. I like to kind of group them together, not that they're the same oil, but in the sense of skin, they kind of do the same thing. They're calming oils that allow you to tackle acne without drying out the skin and um, stripping it of its natural oils, which some of the oils, you know, like when you're talking more tea tree, right, because that's a more for blemish prone skin, 
that one kind of strips away your natural oils because it's trying to balance out your skin. But you have to listen to your skin and see what it's asking of you. So if you put the tea tree on an acne spot and then it starts getting dry, don't put the tea tree on it anymore. Get the lavender or the chamomile out because now you're overdoing it. So you always have to play the balancing game and you have to figure out what your body is asking of you. So lavender and German chamomile, they do the opposite by relieving breakouts and soothing the skin instead. Some other top oils for skin and lessening irritations such as acne include, but are definitely not limited to, Royal Hawaiian Sandalwood, which lets you radiate outwards illuminate and enhance healthy looking skin. Yes, I don't have that one. I can't wait to get it. I only have helichrysum, which is a more of a floral oil and it smooths the appearance of the skin. So when you're dealing with acne, blemishes, spots or anything, it really helps smooth those out. Copaiba. This is one that I take internally. It's a part of our vitality line. When I cannot control what's going on inside because maybe I'm eating inflammatory foods, I'll take it inside and put it in my face care. Then again, ylang ylang, which smells great. So I said that I always put frankincense in all my face stuff. I also like to put ylang because the smell is unbelievable. So yes, it's great for the skin, but I do it mainly because it just smells so amazing that I want it on me. <laughs> um, and then carrot seed, which you had mentioned, vitamin A, super great for the skin. I feel like also just think of the color of carrot seed, right? It's so orange and vibrant. And when you think of like getting a tan, like I wanna kind of be that glowy, orangey, you know, not orange, but I, that's the color that I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting some of that vibrantness in me. If Reducing the appearance of blemishes is high on your skincare to-do list. Try all of the above. It doesn't really matter if you're trying to go for acne, you know, or this or that, because they are all great and they're all going to get you one step closer to that radiant glow. If this seems to overwhelm you, try grabbing Stress Away, Peace and Calming, or Citrus Fresh. Super simple. Those are blends in the premium starter kit that if you don't have all these fancy dancy ones, because you know we all start somewhere, you can grab those. Why? They're magnificent blends that combine more than one of the above oils for targeted help with acne prone skin. For example, Stress Away, Copaiba, Lime, Cedarwood, Vanilla, Akotea, and Lavender. That's one, two, three, four skin loving oils in there in that blend. And then you have vanilla. It smells great, right? What's, what's to go wrong with that? I break out. I don't know if this is the same for everyone. It's because I'm stressed. So make a sugar face scrub with stress away. Oh my gosh, how decadent would that be, right? Then peace and calming. That's another option. Tangerine, orange, and ylang with a blue tansy. Again, all great skin loving ones that we keep mentioning. And then citrus fresh. That one's more of a brightening one. Um, because it's got all those bright mandarin, spearmint, tangerine. I would say even with that one, that could be really good for a deep cleanse if you want to kind of combine that with eucalyptus. There's never really a good time for a bad breakout, honestly. So any of these that you have on hand, don't be afraid to use them. Confidence is key in this area. Um, and if you're nervous, you know, always just test it out on that soft spot of your skin. That's really going to let you know whether your face can handle it or not. And then if not, get some oil and just wash it off. Not with water. Oil is going to do the trick, which is another thing about detoxing the face. Because even though you're putting great and amazing things on it, you kind of want to sometimes pull those toxins out. It's hard to always add and never take out. It's almost like a cycle. And same for the whole body. When you put stuff in, you want to get the nasties out, which Leah, you alluded to earlier, and we're definitely going to talk about a little bit more later. If you're having a really hard time with acne and you don't have time for grabbing this oil or that oil, Young Living does already have maximum strength acne treatment. Now, I have not personally used this one. Um, luckily, I have been given the chance to use these oils to target my skin before I ever needed that one, so fortunately. But if you don't have time, um, you can go grab that. Um, it's packed with naturally derived ingredients such as silica acid from wintergreen to help clear blemishes. Then it has the added power of tea tree and manuka, which we talked about earlier, very cleansing, especially when you're breaking out, you want to get those yuckies out. 
aloe and chamomile extracts to kind of cool the skin, relieve it a little bit um, from all the stuff coming at it. Um, and it adds a softening and moisturizing dual action, gentle, powerful treatment to your face. After washing your face, you apply that one to three times a day, depending on what your skin is trying to tell you again. So if it's too dry, only use it once. Um, another great option to detox the face of impurities, such as buildup of makeup, would be to do an oil cleanse. Rather than like washing your face a ton, because maybe if you're washing your face too much, you're stripping all your natural oils. And the body has its own way of getting into homeostasis. So sometimes you don't want to strip those oils. You want to help your body get above that wellness line and stay in the homeostasis it wants to be in. At that point, I would refer back to like a V6, which has plenty of skin loving oils or coconut oil, which again um, is really good for the skin because it really targets and nourishes and hydrates your skin. Arguably, the only thing worse than a breakout on your face is a breakout on your body. Tackling body acne sounds very difficult because it's the whole body. So any of the above oils, I would say six to eight drops in your bath and let it all soak in, soak up that goodness. And not only that, when you're thinking your skin is the largest organ of your body, so ingesting any of those oils that are part of our vitality line will also help you get there quicker. Um, so let's say bye-bye to blemishes and get on our merry way to reclaiming clear skin. Leah, I don't know if you want to talk about rashes. I sure do. Because, um, you know, why not? So there's a lot of obviously um, different types of rashes. Um, I'm going to kind of talk a little general and then also um, pull into eczema because that's a big one that a lot of people have a lot of trouble with. And so this is not to say cure, everything's fine. But, and it is a lot of internal work, kind of a lot of what Angel was saying. Um, depending upon the rash, what's going on, you know, I've had rash from putting on like too much of a toxic chemical before I knew they were toxic. And I was like, what is going on? And it was like on my arm. So it can kind of happen with a lot of different things. So we're going to keep a little general and a little specific. Um, the thing that I kept when Angel and I were planning this class, probably like every other like discussion we'd have, I'd just scream out randomly, rose ointment out of nowhere, because it would occur to me that I must talk about rose ointment because this stuff is just a magical little bottle thing, whatever, um, that I just, I just love it. So it obviously has rose in it. Um, Palmarosa, nope, yeah, Palmarosa, sorry. Patchouli, myrrh, um, bergamot, tea tree, yangling, and geranium, and again, rose. So, <clears throat> You've heard those mentioned here and there before. That's one I love to have on hand um, for just a whole host of reasons. Um, sometimes if it's like, if I have a patch that's just like really dry skin or if I'm like in the desert for a month, I'll need to add that on. Or the winter, the heaters that dry out everything. That's a really good one. Um, sometimes for your lips too, if they're really dry. So it's, it's multifaceted for a ton of things. Um, and I've had mine for a while and I, used it then it's like well over maybe even a year six months so it's um it's a beautiful little tube not tube whatever tub to have on hand um because you can make that but i don't have a ton of time for the making except for my face stuff so like my face cream so rose ointment for the win so i mentioned it and i feel good about that um and when i was going through a huge uh eczema breakout due to some autoimmune issues which we'll actually talk about in a class later this month by the way um that was a key that I wish I had known about because I didn't know about rose ointment at the time because it's really, really good for healing skin that's, whether it's dry and cracked or just having a bad day. So rose ointment um, for all things really, but rash and uh, specifically like we're talking. The other ones that can be really good for a rash um, can be peppermint, tea tree, lavender, geranium, and you can actually add all those uh, into a coconut oil. Again, I don't have my little face cream next to me. This happened to me last time I talked, but it's a little tiny glass jar and you just put coconut oil and add those in um, and you can um, blend that up with your finger, whatever. And that can really help with um, a lot of different rashes. And again, it depends on where the rash, don't use that in diaper rash. We're going to talk about that later. Um, yeah, don't do that. But other rashes you could definitely use it for, whether that's on your face or on 
your hands. Like my, my eczema was on my hands. I couldn't even open it. So what I specifically used was tea tree lavender. Um, I used purification, which is the blend we mentioned earlier, thyme, frankincense, of course, um, helichrysum, eucalyptus, and bergamot. Um, there is actually more too, but that was kind of what I went with because I had found that and that's what I had. So I put that in coconut oil and I put that on my hands multiple times a day. I had these white gloves I had to wear because my hands were so cracked and like bleeding in the middle. It was God awful. So those oils saved my life. Like I was doing internal work in like foods and other stuff, but I wouldn't have been able to like open my hands if I didn't have essential oils and coconut oil to help distribute it. So. Yes, thing. And actually, the Journal of Traditional and Complementary Medicine reported that frankincense can be used to reduce skin irritation and redness and improve skin tone. And actually, they said, and this is a quote, has a steroid-like effect to help repair damaged skin. So that is for our rash um, protocol, if you will. So Angel, I believe, is going to be talking now about the DIY. I'm going to show you the DIY first and then we're going to pull up a graphic if anyone wants to screenshot it, if they're like really excited about um, the DIY, it's there for you. But I'm going to just run through how to make it first. So our DIY is a mermaid hairspray. All right. And in the mermaid hairspray, we have rosemary, lavender, and cedarwood. Cedarwood, rosemary, and lavender. You're also going to need witch hazel and a little bottle. So my bottle's not too big. Um, it's a little small one, but fill half of ha fill it up halfway with distilled water. Um, and you could do this bigger. You could do it in different sprays, but this one is. I just think it's pretty. So I like putting stuff in pretty bottles. <laughs> And then honestly, you're going to do equal parts of all of them. Cedarwood is great for the scalp. My personal testimonial with this is when I got this for free on a central rewards, um, I didn't even know what it was for. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? I smelled it and I didn't like it, which is key for you need it. Um, and I sure did. Um, I'm going to put five drops of each in for this recipe. And so it's all equal parts. So that's super easy to remember. When I first got cedar wood, I applied it to my scalp because they said it was great for hair. And it was. And I had a lot of scalp issues going on. And I would put like 20 drops straight on my scalp and massage it in. Now, I only put one drop in the morning on my crown because I don't need it anymore. And it smells amazing. If I put it with stress away, it reminds me of Skittles. I don't know. And I don't even have Skittles. It's been like years since I had them, but I used to love Skittles. So you put five drops. So cedarwood is super great. It helps with my flaky, inflamed scalp. Um, and it didn't make my hair oily. So I can use it every morning. And now I am super confident about my hair. And then lavender, you know, because why not? Lavender is great to calm. Um, it's super moisturizing. And then rosemary. So this is going to have kind of a, um, a little bit of an herbaceous aroma um, because of the rosemary. And rosemary really helps your hair grow and stimulate your scalp. Um, so it's super helpful, helpful for that. I saw testimonials online when I was looking up this recipe about people's hair growing drastically when they use this constantly. Um, and you put it in, right? I filled it half with water put my oils in, topped it off with the witch hazel, give it a little shake, and then you can kind of see, oh yeah, and then you just use it on your hair. Um, this is really great to get, especially when you're on the beach. So I feel like it's like four mermaid waves. When you're in the sun and your hair just really needs hydration, this is great. And it smells like I'm on a beach, honestly, right now. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Um, so sometimes if your conditioner just isn't doing the trick um, and you don't have time to do like a leave-in or something, especially with the drying summer heat and the summer sun soaking up all your oils, let's say, um, this is where this can come in handy. A little tender loving care for your hair. It also functions as a serum. So if you want to use the same recipe, right? Five drops, five drops, 
and five drops, and you do an oil loving hair um, or an oil for hair, then that could be it too. And you just put it in a bottle that's a serum dropper. So it's super simple. And I will say, I would say this is more of a moisturizing hairspray. So the trick here is if you want a hairspray that's actually going to give you a little hold, instead of water, do a sugar simple syrup because that sugar simple syrup is only going to be half of it and that's going to give you that tacky moisturizing hold you want. So you could really make three things out of this, which I thought was amazing. I just had to share with you all. And those are all great skin, hair loving oils that help your hair grow, help your hair stay hydrated and really brighten up your day. Like I feel I just want to continue spraying it on my hair. I feel like hair is so integral. I don't know if you ladies feel the same way. But for this, it doesn't call for frankincense, but for me, I personally probably would put frankincense in it because like I said, I put it in everything. I am going to jump into the next topic actually, which is varicose veins. All right. For those of you who may not know what varicose veins is, I actually have this. So this is another personal story for me. Um, it's more hereditary in my family, apparently. I'm not sure um, how that works, but I started in college getting my blood vessels popping in my shins and my shins were all black and blue, but no one hit my shins. I didn't hit my shins on anything. It's just my blood vessels were popping because I had a lack of circulation. So I had a lot of circulation issues, which is pretty much the root problem of varicose veins. And a lot of these things, you wanna to get to the root problem. So when you talk about circulation, there's a lot of oils that could really help with that, which is amazing. You just see the graphic here that blood flow and the vein, the veins are just having trouble going the right way and um, flowing in directions they don't need to flow in. So how do you help your whole system kind of circulate? And again, that has to do with detoxing, getting rid of the yuckies, putting in and creating that circular routine and commitment to nourishing yourself, which I didn't know back in the day, right? And that's what we're all here learning about. Knowing what I know now, I realized a lot of these oils target circulatory concerns. Bad blood circulation causes more things than spider and varicose veins. It makes your body feel numb, and I've experienced all of these tired under eye bags think about it my under eyes used to be like so dark they almost used to be purple i have a slightly darker skin i just thought that's how i looked like makeup right a lot of times i felt numb tired because i wasn't getting the right oxygen because a lot of blood transfers a lot of oxygen the oxidative stress and all that stuff so your body feels that it feels tired it feels like it's not working right and it's followed by a poor appetite which leads to digestive issues and thus a weakened immune system. And as Leah's talked about a little bit before, immune health is really key to kind of making your skin and all these issues suppressed because when your immune system's not functioning, it can't fight off all these ailments. Other issues may be swollen extremities, which my feet would swell up a lot because blood was getting stuck down there. Feeling of being cold, I would get cold a lot. I have some iron issues because oxygen's not being flowed through my body correctly. Fragile nails and fragile hair, and even dark under eye circles, which I had mentioned before. So funny because I had all these problems, right? Um, and I still feel, I still get my little varicose veins here and there, but knowing this now, I'm gonna try this out and definitely be committed. When your body lacks circulation, that means the nutrition you're consuming is not being transported where it needs to go. I always like to think of this category as the hot oil category. What are hot oils? They're oils that when applied neat or undiluted, your skin feels so much of a sensation that it gets hot, right? Now, all that means is that it needs to be diluted with oil. That's how strong these oils are at creating circulation. So that's just a testament of how powerful they are because these are concentrated plants, um, plant powers as I like to call them. I would also say that a lot of these circulation things had to do with my scalp too because I wasn't getting the nutrition I needed on my scalp. It was starting at my feet, the problem. So imagine my blood flow, having problems at my feet, how is it 
affecting all of these areas. This one has lemongrass, cypress, and helichrysum. Lemongrass is a well-known blood vessel di dilator, which promotes lymphatic flow and is a well-known oil for varicose veins. Like, I feel like all the varicose veins wine was like lemongrass, lemongrass, lemongrass. <laughs> um, cypress, it's derived from the Greek word semi -previvens. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it looks like veins, which I thought was interesting. But nonetheless, this means living forever. And to me, that meant like being forever young. This is also a well-known circulation stimulator that discourages fluid retention and promotes liver health. And when you think about what the liver's function is um, to detox the body, it helps you get rid of everything. Promoting that health and increasing its circulation to actually detox and get rid of all the nasties really helps the all the other good things do what it needs to do and then helichrysum this has the ability to stop excess of blood flow it's a detoxifier and a stimulant for the liver as well as you can see the liver also plays a big role in skin health i would also like to just mention a few more circulatory goodies we have going on here rosemary i've seen it a lot of recipes where it's used for hair loss and it is a very energizing herbal scent so a lot of that speaks to me when you're having hair troubles losing hair and it's an energizing smell it's going to help increase the circulation um, because we know that as soon as you smell it it hits your blood brain barrier within 20 seconds so imagine what that's doing on your skin raven you find that in the premium starter kit this is known to detox lymph lymph nodes and is a very cleansing bl um, blend so in the sense of circulation and varicose veins you want to stimulate that lymphatic system and get all that out to help circulate your blood flow on raven there's cinnamon lemon wintergreen peppermint and eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is an expectorant along with helichrysum, allowing for all that good blood flow. Then we have also thieves. This is an immune booster. It's got clove, lemon, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. So because those have some targeted oils in there, I would feel very comfortable using those to help my varicose veins and ingesting them too, because thieves is a vitality. So I would not mind taking that inside to help me in that kind of way. Um, another good option is pain away. It's a muscle rub, right? Pain away. And really when my varicose vein is acting up, it's really just in that one spot. It's almost like your muscle is sore, but it's your veins and you feel them throbbing. So in pain away, there's wintergreen, helichrysum, clove and peppermint again some hot oils clove peppermint wintergreen they really get everything circulating they get you energized just kind of smelling them and then we also have geranium which i wanted to highlight because it's regenerative and skin healing due to the stimulation it provides for the liver and the pancreas to detox and thus revitalize skin cells so even though I gave you that recipe, there are plenty of other things that you can do to help and take action right away. You don't wanna be in pain. I'm actually also gonna talk about under eye bags, which I feel like has a little overlap in that area. When I was going through all those circulation issues, I told you I couldn't get the nutrients because my body was having trouble kind of getting everything where it needed to be. So I feel like I had really dark under eye circles, which was more of a sign of a lack of nutrition. I was really excited one day when I got told that Valor could be used to help under eye bags and the coloring, but that makes a lot of sense. I didn't think about that. I've had this oil, I use it for perfume, I use it on my feet at night to kind of when I wake up, I feel all different and revitalized. Valor has black spruce, cinnamon, camphor wood, blue tansy, frankincense, and geranium. We've already talked about blue tansy, frankincense, and ger geranium just in general for their skin loving properties. Geranium, I'll just go over that again. This oil is literally great for all skin type, but especially for oily or dry skin, um, it's a super popular choice to help smooth and tone the skin. So when you think about under eye bags and them being of a different color, toning really comes into mind. Blue tansy, of course, a traditional, extremely luxury type oil found in many high-end skincare products. 
It's got a complex floral scent with an air of exotic adventure. And again, it's another doll for soothing the skin and reducing blemishes. It also has relaxant um, properties in it. So I thought that was very interesting because when your eyes are puffy, it helps your under eye bags relax. So I thought that was a nice thing. Then we have cinnamon and camphor. I feel like they help plump the bags, bring them to life because they are more of those stimulating oils. Um, and then frankincense because frankincense is life. <laughs> Just kidding, um, but seriously. And then black spruce and frankincense are very grounding. So either way, I love grounding oils, especially on days where I didn't get to go outside enough. I feel like when my body doesn't get to go outside, it, it's not happy with me and <laughs> we don't want that. That was another one that you can use from the premium starter kit to get you started right away. If you are feeling unhappy with how your under eye bags are, don't be afraid. I put the filament on it and Valor actually already has an oil in there. So even though it has a hot oil, it's okay. I do it every day. If it doesn't make you comfortable, I get it. I mean, you could always dilute it even more with an oil that you think would be great. But we have a fun little trick that Leah actually shared with me using the seedlings diaper rash cream for under eyes. Some of the key ingredients in here are, is that it's a non-nano zinc oxide, which Leah, you mentioned earlier about Young Living having non-nano zinc, um, mango butter, murmur butter, lavender oil, of course, German chamomile to help calm all of those, helichrysum, which we've talked about before, calendula flower, what it doesn't contain, alcohol, parabens, phylates, petrochemicals, animal-derived ingredients, synthetic preservatives, synthetic fragrances, or synthetic dyes. Um, so I feel like this is a true testament to what you can do when your products are so pure, right? It's a diaper rash cream, but that doesn't mean it needs to be for the baby's bum, because essentially you're going after the same thing. Um, so I feel like if you get to know your skin, then you'll start to see how your skincare can come from anything that's nourishing. Not anything, but anything that's nourishing for you and your body. Um, it reduces redness, soothes with pretty much immediate relief, protects the skin as well with a physical barrier to wetness that locks in moisture. I'm a big fan of locking in moisture. I like moisture, I like feeling moisture, I like that dewy skin look. Um, so I can't wait to get my hands on this because I'm very excited about that. Actually, I took a picture um, of before and after putting on the, um, what the hell did I do? Yeah, the diaper rash cream. I was like, I don't know. We just talked about 20 things I do. Um, so yeah, the diaper rash cream, you can kind of see it. I was like, what am I doing? Um, but on the right, the before you can see, like I, my bags aren't too bad right now because I'm like getting proper sleep and nutrition and things, but they're there. Um, and then if you put on the diaper rash cream, you only need like the tiniest amount ever. Like you can't even see how much you need um, because you just don't. It's very potent. And so you just put a teeny bit on, teeny bit on, and you rub it in and you're good to go. Um, I hadn't put on a full face of makeup in months because, you know, life. And so I was like, well, I'm going outside and they look a little dark today. I'm going to put on a little bit of this. So you just literally put on a little bit, rub it in and you're good to go. So I love that one. And then yes. And then now we're going to talk about the dirty, the dirty face protocol, which I just named because I thought it was funny. So the, um, this picture kind of outlines a little bit of about it. So we all probably wash our face. I would think, um, I have gone through like in the years of using young living, I've tried different things just to try new products or that one sounds good or, Ooh, I didn't even know that existed. So for me, I'll talk about mine really quick and then give a little general, but, um, that charcoal soap that's on the right, right there, um, of the picture is magical. That soap also can be used as a body soap. So I love that when I travel, cause I'm like, I want to bring the least amount of stuff. Of course I have like 50 oils literally, but the other crap I don't care about. I just want oils and the charcoal bowl bar because I can use that for my face and for my body. So that is a very um, magical little bar of soap, which again, I didn't really believe that you could use a soap for your face and for your um, body. And of course, not everyone can like, don't, you know, try it out and all the things, but I love the charcoal soap. So that one um, is really just, 
I don't know if anyone's read anything about charcoal, but it's actually skin purifying activated charcoal, um, which can leave skin clean, soft, and smooth. And it's also, of course, made without the sulfates, phthalates, parabens, dye, synthetic fragrances, or preservatives. Yeah, so it also has lemon essential oil in it, rosemary. It also has jojoba, which can be very like, um, I was going to say calming for the skin, but kind of, as well as like olive oil and lavender um, and charcoal and patchouli. So there's a lot of little things in that bar. And that bar I use every day and lasts a very long time as well. So charcoal bowl bar for the win. The other thing that I've used on here is the Art Gentle Cleanser. So there's actually like an Art skincare line. They have a mask. They have um, obviously a cleanser, two different types of moisturizers, might even be three. Um, and so the art has a lot there. So I actually got that, I think first or second in my journey and I loved it. Um, so I have no complaints about it. I just was like, Ooh, new thing to try with the charcoal slope. So that is a really, um, great cleanser as well. And then the orange blossom is actually fairly new I in the last year and that I just got. So I'm really excited to try that one too. So that's the other thing that I like about Young Living as kind of Angel was saying is that if I don't have time to like do my own thing or create my own face wash or however it looks like Young Living just does it for me, um, which is kind of what I, I won't say require, but I really like that it has that because then I can choose to either use what they already make for me or make my own. So the orange blossom one has lavender, patchouli, rosemary, obviously orange, lemon. So a lot of the ones, and also I think roses in there too. So we've talked a lot about a lot of those. So I'm not going to dive in again into each of those. Um, so the orange blossoms got got a lot of good stuff in there and people have raved that it makes their skin just brighten. I feel like guys like this one a lot too, because it's just not super flowery. I guess I smell it. I'm so used to it that if I, if I do, I don't even notice, but I love it so much. So that, but the whole point of this dirty face protocol was to talk about kind of washing your face and then you can use a toner on your face and then moisturize your face. Again, everyone's different. Your face is your face, but what I do is right now, at least the charcoal next is the orange blossom. Can't wait. And so for a toner I've used, so the art has a toner, like the little art kit. If you look this up, um, this I loved actually a lot. So I'm like, maybe I need to go now to the art again. Um, and that's, what's fun is that I can switch it up and just see what I like. To, but some people are like married to one or the other and that's it. They never change. And that's great too. So whatever your skin wants, but the art toner is really good. I, um, because I'd gotten the charcoal. So I was like, oh, let me just make my own toner because I was like, you know, this is what I wanted to do. So for mine, I put geranium, lavender, purification, frankincense, and then that's just in with witch hazel. And I put it in like a bottle, shake it up, and I use a cotton ball and just tone the skin. Um, so I really like that. There are a million different recipes you can use for that one. Um, but that's kind of the one that I have been using. And then moisturize honest to God, endless moisturizing options. We've talked about a lot of them at this, this class, so I, again, will not repeat all of them. There is an art moisturizer. There's a heavier one and a lighter one. So you're like in the summer or in, in a humid climate, I've used the lighter one. And then the heavier one is great for either winter or sometimes if you're in a desert or drier climate. Um, so that's really good. And there's also uh, the one that I make, which again, I think I've talked about, but I'll just talk about it one more time, um, is coconut oil. Lavender, frankincense, I threw Valor in there, purification, Royal Hawaiian sandalwood, geranium, and I think I threw patchouli in there too, because that's another skin one. You can actually use that one as deodorant too sometimes, depending on the person, don't, you know, disclaimer. But my friend of mine uses it just as her deodorant patchouli, so I thought that was awesome. That's kind of the one I make. Every time I make it, it is different, because I just forget all the details of what I put in it, so I just throw in those basic ones and then whatever the heck else I want to. Did I say purification? Yeah. So that's kind of the homemade one, if you will. Um, and then again, the art has two of them, um, different ones, again, for whatever works. And there's actually the orange blossom moisturizer. So it's like goes together with the orange blossom into cleaner, um, you know, facial wash. So they have the moisturizer too, which has a lot of the similar oils. And again, people have raved about that. So I'm excited to try my next, you know, exciting skin um, thing. So that's kind of the dirty face protocol, which I work out every day. So my face definitely sweats. And if I'm outside, 
the, all those free radicals and gross stress and dirt and donuts. Yeah. So now um, Angel is going to talk a little bit, kind of what we've mentioned a lot of, and she was just going into detail with um, with the under eye bags is kind of your inside out. You know, what do you do? Because like, if you're not taking care of your inside, sometimes no matter what the hell you do to your skin, it's not going to be that happy. So take it away, Angel. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Leah. Um, so beauty from the inside out. Okay. This part, I feel like I could really highlight our premium starter kit because it's just amazing. And there are a couple things in there we haven't talked about that I think really amplify this section. To me, I feel like beauty always begins with oral care. What you put in your mouth, in your body, that all affects your immune system. As we've heard and learned, the immune system affects how you feel. How you feel affects how you look. So lemon essential oil, I know we talked about that in the, um, the nail care, but lemon essential oil and thieves, both are amazing for oral care. They help keep your smile white as well. So that's another thing. I know we have the thieves oral care line in the premium starter kit, Right now, I already have um, a powder toothpaste, so I don't want to toss it and waste any of it. So I put some Thieves essential oil in there to hold me over in the meantime, because I want Thieves and I want my teeth to be nice and white. Put a little lemon in there. And I think that's really amazing because I drink coffee a lot. If you drink wine a lot, I know you get those, those teeth stains. Lemon helps brighten, and honestly, when I feel better, I look better, I want to smile more, then we'll go into detoxing and de-stressing. I feel like learning to release emotionally, physically, and mentally is a really big part about cleaning out your insides and kind of just coming into that new state of who you are, who you want to be, where you want to take your skin regimen. So a good one for detoxing is Raven. It's got cinnamon, which we've talked about, especially for the varicose veins, lemon, wintergreen, peppermint, and eucalyptus. Again, those were talked about for the varicose veins, and that's really good to detox those lymph nodes. Um, you could use it in a bath or on your face whenever your face needs like a serious oil detox cleanse. I would even say using that with an exfoliant to amplify the detoxing effects would be amazing because when you're exfoliating, you're really turning and um, getting your lymph nodes to start working and moving. Getting rid of all those toxins is a setup for success when adding in these new products. Um, in order to be in with the new, you have to learn how to let go of the old. So then another great one is Stress Away. Young Living has Stress Away relaxing bath bombs as well, which is a hassle-free, stress-free way to have a at-home spa-like experience. You can even just use Stress Away in your bath if you don't have the bath bombs, or you can use it as perfume during the day. Put it in your diffuser as you do your nighttime self-care routine, right? Whatever that may look like for you. Leah, maybe that dirty skin proto protocol with a little bit of stress away in the diffuser. Now let's talk about how we can add in the good. Bye, guys. That's got tarragon, ginger, peppermint, juniper, fennel, lemongrass, anise, and patchouli, which you had mentioned earlier. Very interesting about that. This one is super important for gut health and helping to regulate your di digestive system to put less stress on your body so your body can focus on other areas such as radiant skin. I would say that gut health is super important for the skin. Um, I feel like what you put in your gut really says a speaks to what your skin is. I feel like when I eat sugar too much, my skin starts breaking out a lot. So I feel like getting Die Guys in my um, self-care routine has, I don't do it too often, but when I do, I feel like invigorated and nourished and that nourishment goes to my skin and then my digestive system can break down all my food how it needs to because really that's what it helps you do. It helps you break down your food. I come from the restaurant industry, so a lot of times after a meal, if you're feeling fancy, you don't just have wine, you have an after dinner drink. It's like a pretty much a digestion drink that's alcoholic and it just really helps your digestive system speed up and helps break down that food that you just ate so your body can do other things your body wants to do. So I feel like that's a very big testament, like putting it on 
your stomach after, or like I said, if I eat late at night, putting it on my stomach. So when you eat late at night, that's not good. You're not getting sleep because your body is still working. It's still breaking down food when really it should be sleeping, right? You always hear like, don't eat three hours before bed, but sometimes that's not possible. Um, and what's happening is if you eat that late, your body actually isn't sleeping. It's still working and breaking down food. So when your body doesn't get enough sleep, you get stressed, you get anxiety, you don't feel happy, you know, you get your under eye bags. So how do you alleviate all that stuff from the inside? You get thigh guys. And then Ningxia Red. It's like one of my favorite things. I've been taking it every morning and I love it. I take it in the afternoon for an afternoon pick-me-up. This is the tastiest whole food supplement you'll ever need. Most fruit juices intend to be well, but this is different. It's super concentrated, nutrient dense, and has essential oils already in it. No wonder why I can't get enough, right? The combination of the whole wolfberry, the juice, the peel, the seeds, and the fruit sustain and support energy um, without the crashes due to its high fiber content. Not only that, but the high fiber content in there allows you to feed your gut microbiome. This is known as a prebiotic, which helps the probiotics flourish. So your probiotics, in order for them to flourish, it needs a prebiotic, which is fiber. The combination of some of the world's most antioxidant rich fruits combines synergistically with a therapeutic grade blend of essential oils, helps support digestion, and maintain an overall healthily bodily functions. Now, if you're wondering what exactly is an antioxidant, Leah, I know you mentioned that earlier, it's a nutrient such as a vitamin, mineral, or enzyme, which help fight off those free radicals you also mentioned earlier. Free radicals are produced naturally by the body through oxidation, so it just happens, but the damage can be mitigated if you increase your antioxidant intake. So, make sure red. It's liberating to know when I use the Ningxia Red, I'm receiving 17 trace minerals, six essential fatty acids, and 18 amino acids. When my body gets all those nutrients, I don't have to take as many supplements because I'm getting them from my food um, and from my Ningxia, and my skin loves it. My skin just eats it up. It, it glows because the nutrients and all that stuff is there already. So I don't need to add extra stuff onto my face because I'm putting it in my body. So it's amazingly effects. And then we can't forget, right? We have to do those daily tasks, exercising, getting enough water, hydrating, especially hydration. Frizzy hair is actually a lack of hydration in your hair follicles, which we also have a, um, the Mira Luminous Oil. I can't wait to get that for my hair but it's actually a lack of hydration. So you gotta do those foundational things, eating the right diet, um, making sure you work out, staying hydrated, being consistent. I feel like all those things are important. So with everything we just talked about, I'm sure you're going to love the skin you're gonna get naturally and love, love your skin however it is. That's the most important part. You have to love who you are, what you're doing, and you have to wanna show up for yourself.